right, so um, how are we? Pretty good, Donna. Good. Well, I'm here this morning because um, I'm just uh, covering for, for Pastor Glenn, who's just fallen uh, sick uh, just on Friday. Um, and so uh, I'll be covering for this morning. Um, now, this morning, I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the Great Commission, because what we are witnessing today is really the fruit of it. You know, um, as Rachna and, and Ryan uh, prepare themselves for water baptism, you know, I thought it would be very helpful for us to, uh, this morning, to go over, you know, one of the most important uh, passages in the Bible known as the Great Commission. And I'm quite sure most of us here are very familiar uh, with that topic. And so we will briefly touch on baptism as well. And so what I, what I want to do this morning, um, you know, before I get into my message, I'll ask Rachna and, and Ryan just to, just to go and, and prepare yourselves to get changed, um, you know, just before I get into my, my message. Um, so hopefully it'll be quick and you guys come back and you'll still be, make it in time uh, to uh, listen to what will be shared today, as well as Heston and Anthony, I believe, wherever he's gone. Um, get yourself ready. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, get, get yourself ready now. <laughs> because I, I don't know how, how long my message will be. Um, I've prepared it short, but let's see just how, you know, how God leads the service today. Amen? Amen. Now, what I want to do this morning is uh, to draw your attention to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 and really speak briefly on verses 18 through 20. So uh, if you have your Bibles with you, can you please go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 28? And we're going to be reading, again, uh, from verse 18 through to 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses uh, 18 through to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, and Lord, we submit ourselves to the authority of your word, and we invite your spirit and your presence to be with us here this morning, Lord God, as we study your word. We pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive and to understand your truth. Help us, Father, that we do not become hearers only, but to be doers of your word, and that in everything that we do, Lord God, we do it because we love you and we want to glorify you. We want to exalt the name of Jesus. It's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the focus on, my, uh, on our passage this morning is on the commissioning of Jesus to all of his disciples. And so the title of my message this morning is really understanding what our biblical mandate is as followers of Jesus Christ. You know, these disciples beginning, you know, from the past to the present and right through to the future is to declare the good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world. And Jesus commissioned not only the 11 disciples or apostles, but all who were present being more than 500 people at one time, as we're called for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. And notice something that's very important about what Jesus is saying in verses 19 to 20 to his disciples, because when we read uh, what Jesus is commanding here, it is impossible for that generation alone to reach the entire world in its lifetime. We would agree that the, this commissioning by Jesus wasn't just given to the first generation of believers, but actually extends to all generations of believers and followers of Jesus Christ. The very same charge that was given to them is also given to us today. Jesus charges all of us who name the name of Christ with these very same words. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. 
Now, from these passages, I want us to understand that the commissioning of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples and to all of us today, as well as all disciples in the future, is threefold. Okay, I want you to understand that this commissioning of Jesus to his disciples is threefold. Okay, and I all want of us to really absorb this and really understand how important this really is for any follower of Jesus Christ. The first commissioning by Jesus is to go and make disciples of all nations. And this is probably one of the most crucial verses in the Bible. There is no other passages throughout the scripture could be more important for the genuine believer than the very words of Jesus right here. Now, I want to say something that's very important. Teaching and baptizing is not enough to reach the world for Jesus Christ. All right? Both of these are very important, okay? and our Lord commissions both. But Jesus says something else that must precede both, and that is discipleship. Okay? That is discipleship. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, most messages that are preached, okay, um, on this passage stresses the objective of our Lord Jesus Christ, all right? That is to reach all nations. The objective is to reach all nations, you know, as though this is what our Lord had in mind. Or we think about to reach all nations, but we forget what it actually means when we study the text more fuller. Jesus was not only telling us to go and evangelize, he was telling us how to go and how to evangelize. Jesus was not only giving us his ultimate objective and overriding purpose, he was giving us, listen, the very method, okay? The very method to evangelize the world. Think about these two words, make disciples. Think about that. Make disciples. What does Jesus actually mean by make disciples? Right? Doesn't, doesn't that mean that we are to do what Jesus did? Okay. Make disciples and do the things with them as Jesus did? Is Jesus not telling us to do exactly what he did? Now, the a question that you might want to ponder on, well, what exactly did Jesus do? during his earthly ministry for three years. What exactly did Jesus do? The Bible gives us a very clear picture in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, when Jesus says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And what did Jesus do? He sought the lost, those who were willing to commit their lives to him. And when Jesus found such person, he saved that person. Amen? When Christ has found such a person who was willing to commit his or her life, Christ attaches himself to that person. Are you following me on that one? Okay? When Christ found someone who is willing to commit themselves to him, okay, Christ attaches himself to that person. And when Christ attaches himself to that person who was willing to commit themselves, Jesus begins, listen, to mold and to make that person into his image. Okay? He attaches himself to that person in order to mold them and to make them into his image. Image. That word attach is very important. Um, it's a very important keyword because it probably best describes what discipleship is. Okay, Christ made disciples of men and women by attaching himself to them. And through that personal attachment, all right, they were able to observe his life. Through that personal attachment, they were able to observe his life. They were able to observe his conversation. In seeing and hearing, they began to absorb and assimilate his very character and behavior. It's very important that we understand that when Christ finds people who are committed to following him, he will attach himself. And when they are attached with Christ, they will begin to see Christ and they will begin to resemble Christ in their very own life. 
And there is this willing, uh, this residual effect on how the world is to be engaged, how the world is to be evangelized, and how people are to be discipled. All right? This commissioning, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, is an extension, listen carefully, is an extension of Christ himself. It is an extension of his very being and an extension of his mission and his method. Okay? And the way Jesus chose to extend himself was through discipleship, attaching himself to those who were committed to following him in every single way. Think about that in your own life. Are you being molded and changed every day of your life as Christ attaches himself to you? Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Because in turn, the believing disciples, okay, attaches themselves to other people who are committed to following Jesus, okay? Very important that first commission is to understand, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And this is the glorious message of Christ that has been marched down throughout the centuries, and that's the very same thing that Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, where Paul says this, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. There is a residual effect. When you find people who are committed to following Jesus Christ, you attach yourself to them so that they too can become a disciple of Jesus Christ. There is no question and there can be no confusion to what our Lord's commission is. We are to go, but more than that, we are to make disciples. We are to attach ourselves to those people who will commit to following Jesus Christ until they in turn make more disciples for Jesus. Amen? Amen. And that's how the church is going to grow. Secondly, Jesus commissions us to go and baptize all nations, those who genuinely come to faith in him and in him, in him alone for their salvation and for the forgiveness of sin. Now, there are two things that I want you to understand here or take note. The first is that baptism is of crucial importance. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have commissioned it. Okay, remember the commissioning of Jesus is threefold. The first is what? Go and make disciples. The second now is go and baptize those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. Because if baptism wasn't important, okay, um, Jesus could have just said, preach the gospel and that's it. Okay. But Jesus says, go therefore make disciples and baptize the people who come to faith in Jesus Christ. And receiving baptism is, an important, is as important as receiving the teachings of Jesus, despite the fact that the, it is a one-time act of obedience. Okay, Baptism is a one-time act of obedience. Baptism is so much a part of the commissioning of Christ as discipling and teaching the disciples. Okay? What Christ is teaching here is that baptism is to be an immediate sign and the identifying sign that a person is now stepping out of the world, okay? stepping out of this uh, old lifestyle that is entangled by sin and Satan. It is stepping out and declaring that their stance is now with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who has set them free. The Hessens um, just led some beautiful songs of worship this morning. Who, uh, who the Son sets free is free indeed. I surrender all. I want to know more of Jesus. You see, the, uh, you know, in a uh, baptism is important. It is not to be ignored. If we confess with our mouth that we believe in Jesus, the immediate following outward sign is water baptism, because it is an act of obedience. Now, the word baptize, okay, from the Greek is baptizo, okay, and what that actually means, it means to uh, immerse or to dip, okay, to baptize something means to completely submerge that object into liquid, okay, 
And that's where we get this, uh, this, this meaning of baptism, okay? In a biblical sense, to baptize a person in water means to put that person, okay, completely under water. And then they are immediately raised um, him or her up again. Okay, so water baptism is, is a symbolic act where a Christian, okay, identifies with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. It is a public confession of a person's faith in Jesus Christ, and it is an, a way, okay, of giving an outward testimony, okay, to the inward work of what God has done in your life, in my life. That's why baptism is a one-time act. It is a one-time obedience when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ, trusting and believing okay, that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins and three days later was raised back to life, that's the moment when you and I become a child of God. Okay? And that is received by faith in Jesus Christ. And that is what we proclaim in our water baptism service. Okay? We proclaim that, yes, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus who loved me and gave himself for me. And that, by faith, I am a child of God, that by faith I am a new creation in Christ. Baptizing, okay, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit mean, means much more than just saying this formula, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It means much more than that, okay? It means we are declaring a statement of faith. We are declaring a statement of belief, okay, of belief in God as the true Father of Jesus Christ. It is a statement of faith in belief in Christ as the true Son of God, the Savior and Redeemer of the world. It is a statement of faith in belief of the Holy Spirit who is called our helper and our comforter, the one who dwells within those who come to receive Christ in their life. It is that statement of faith that we are declaring. It is also making a commitment to follow God, to follow Him as He has revealed Himself as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is a constant reference in which you see that Jesus makes uh, throughout His Gospel, especially in the Gospel of John. Okay. We need to realize that baptism is not uh, it's not something that's going to be supernatural, but it is a public testimony that we are now in Christ, that we are now following Christ, that we are now making that commitment to follow Jesus all the days of our life. Okay. Third and final point of the commissioning is that Christ commissioned us to teach all that Christ has commanded. The truth of the matter is that teaching is just as essential as making disciples and baptizing those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. Are you tracking with me on that one? Okay? The threefold commissioning is what? Go and make disciples. The second commissioning is go and baptize those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. The third commissioning is teach the disciples to obey all that Christ has commanded. We need to look this, at this um, in a way that doesn't mean that, you know, one commissioning is more important than the other, okay? They're all equally important, and you cannot have one without the other. These threefold of commissioning makes up one big unified known as the Great Commission, Okay? And this is where, for the most part, we find in churches today. Now, I'm not saying our church, okay? but for the most part, um, we find that in, in churches today, there has been shallow understanding of the truth of God's Word because there is a lack of teaching that is happening in the local church. The church should never focus primarily on numbers, okay? I hope you, you agree with me on that, okay? The church should never primarily focus on numbers. It should primarily focus, listen, on making disciples, okay? The church's primary focus should be making disciples for Jesus. And that is very important to understand because teaching them the truth of God's word um, will end up resulting in God increasing in numbers, 
All right, you tracking with me on that one? When you make disciples, numbers is just a, a byproduct of you being committed to making more disciples for Jesus. Okay? The church should never focus primarily on numbers as a way to fill in the missing pew seats. The church should focus on every individual on how to make them a better disciple for Jesus Christ. Okay? And that is why coming to church, you know, coming to church once a week, okay, I say this out of love, is not enough. Coming to church once a week is not enough. If you want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and His Word, it has to be more than just sitting here in this building for a mere one and a half hour service. You know, I, I love the fact that our small church here, we have four different life groups going on during the week. Okay? Four different life groups. Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Sunday afternoons. There can be no excuse for any of us sitting here this morning to say not to go in one of these groups, okay? If we are committed to being followers of Jesus, we will have a hunger and a thirst to follow after Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to understand there's something that's very important. You can never be satisfied with Jesus, all right? You cannot have an attitude of saying, I've had Jesus. I've had enough of Jesus. I've been satisfied with Jesus. All right? That should never be your mentality. That should never be your thinking. That should never be your mindset. Your life as a disciple for Jesus, as a disciple and follower of Jesus, is to hunger and thirst after Jesus Christ. Okay? Your life is to hunger and thirst for Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, teach, go and teach the disciples, those who we come across with, those who we can connect with. We make disciples. We teach people to obey the very words of Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. All right. There can be no greater joy than knowing the very written word of God. The Bible that you hold in your palm is the very word of Christ, okay? And Paul says, let the message of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell among you richly, okay? And listen, as you teach, as you teach and admonish one another. Very important, just in that single verse. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs, from the Spirit, singing to God with a gratitude in your heart. You and I have the words of Christ in our hands. And what Christ teaches and commanded through his written word must be studied and studied time and time again throughout your life. Okay? You are learning. You are observing what Christ is teaching throughout your entire life. It is learning and knowing and listen. It is practicing, learning, knowing, and practicing. That's what Christ has commissioned so that through us, okay, you and I who are the salt and the light of the world, the communities in our society will only flourish when the commandment of Christ is taught and is seen in our very own life. That's why we are the salt and we are the light of the world. Okay, when we teach, okay, from the scriptures, making disciples and in turn disciples making more disciples, can you imagine the profound effect that it will have not only in the family, but also amongst friends, colleagues, communities, and society as a whole? If we take that very seriously, very important that we all must understand that we are to be disciples of Jesus. You know, as I conclude my message, um, Anthony, you're getting yourself ready for baptism. As I conclude the message, um, again, I said that I was going to keep this very short. Remember the promise of Jesus at the end of verse 20. If you go back to Matthew 28, uh, verse 20, Jesus says something that's very, very important and very astounding that we should look at it um, and realize that this is true of what Jesus is saying. In verse 20, Jesus says, And surely... I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
You see, and if that is not enough to get your attention, I don't know what is, okay? It is to wake us up to the reality of this important task in bringing the gospel to the world and making disciples for Jesus, who in turn will make more disciples for Jesus. It is this assurance that the gospel is bearing fruit in the lives of people around us because Jesus didn't say, go and make disciples and I will be with you. Okay, Jesus didn't say, go and make disciples and I will be with you. But instead, no, Jesus says, go and make disciples and surely I am always with you. Amen. I will, okay, some of us think when we go and do outreach, when we try to go reach out to people, whether in our families or in our communities, we may think, will Jesus go with me? Okay, the reality is when we go, when we are committed, yes, Jesus is with us. I am with you always. Okay, Christ is with every believer as the believer goes forth to make disciples of all nations. Christ is with us in every step, in every decision that we make, in every trial, in every joy, every day, every hour, when with every sorrow, Christ is with us. Okay, Christ is with us when we are poor. Christ is with us when we are weak. Christ is with us when we have nothing. Christ is with us even when we are having plentiful. Even when we are abused, Christ is with us. Even when we are sick, Christ is with us. And even in facing death, Christ is with us. Otherwise, there would, no be, there would be no martyrdom happening in the past centuries because they know that Christ is with them. That is a wonderful promise when you and I go out into our families, our friends, our colleagues, our communities, we can be certain that Christ is with us. Okay, and thank God for Jesus because if Jesus wasn't with us, whatever we do for Jesus will be fearful. But we have that assurance, we have that confidence knowing that Christ is going to be with us. And even as we celebrate baptism today, we know that Christ is with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's uh, get ready for, for baptism. And I want all of us to really participate and, and just to be around the, um, the baptism uh, tank, if you call it. And we'll get ready uh, to, uh, to baptize um, Rachna and Ryan. I would like to say it's a dunking service. <laughs> But to, 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 to have it in a more biblical sense, it is a water baptism service with full immersion, okay? And, and that's what baptism is all about. It is a public declaration. And you and I, okay, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know we join with a joyful heart, knowing that two people are going to commit their lives to follow Jesus for the rest of their life. And I want to encourage you that if you haven't been baptized, consider a baptism because Baptism is an act of obedience, okay? It is an, uh, uh, an act of obedience by which we declare that Christ is in us, that we love Jesus, that Jesus is worthy of it all. To say to the world that I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's all stand. And but John would have hindered him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And you come to me? But Jesus answered, saying to him, Suffer it now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. That he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight from the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And lo, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now when Jesus was seven to eight days old, his parents took him to the temple and they dedicated Jesus to God. That was Jesus as a babe. Thirty years later, Jesus, before he started his public ministry, he came down after being tempted, he came down to the Jordan where John was baptizing everybody. And Jesus himself wanted to be baptized. Now Jesus was the son of God, but he came down to earth 
in the form of man. And in order for all of us to declare Christ as our Savior, we have to be baptized. When we get baptized, we openly declare our faith and our reverence and something that tells everybody else that yes, we are going to follow Christ from here on. It's an open declaration as uh, Tola put it in his message. And I ask you, Rachana, as we're about to baptize you, what made you take this step? Um, because I love the Jesus. Jesus is the way, is the truth, and he is the king of peace. And he always told me the truth, and he guide me in my life. And I will follow him. I listen to him more. Amen. That's, that's beautiful. That's openly declaring that Christ is your savior, right? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus came down from heaven as a man to take away all our sins and to take away your sins and to grant you eternal life? Yes, I do. Will you openly declare Christ as your savior from now on? Yes, I will. Amen. I mean, we have it here. And now as a deacon... And as a representative of Pastor Glenn, who is not here, I hereby baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you mind kneeling down? Out with the old, in with the new. For in Christ, everyone is a new creation. Yes. Congratulations, Rachna. Does anyone have a word of prayer for Rachna? Anyone? A word? <laughs> Just going to thank God for yeah, allowing this to happen because it's only by, by God's grace that yeah, all this can happen, uh, Ryan and Rachna. So yeah, I just want to say a little prayer. So, yeah. um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. Lord God, um, I pray that they both prosper in you, Lord Jesus, Ryan and Rachna. I pray that the, the fruits that you, you long, that they yield in their lives to, to, just to glorify and honour you, Lord. Use them as your instruments, to, as a salt and as a light and as a testimony to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, Rachna. All right, Ryan, where are you? Come along, tiger. All right, Ryan. You've heard all what we've said before. And now I'll ask you again as a declaration for everybody. What made you take this step? And what made you decide that you need to be water baptized? Um, I wanted to continue to serve the Lord through drumming and wanted to help the worship team. And I also love the Lord of all my heart and mind and soul, so I decided to get baptized. And with the support of my dad and my parents, I am here right now. Amen. That's fantastic. Beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, you come. And as a deacon, once again, and as a deacon of Springville South Church of Christ, I hereby baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right? Out with the old, in with the new. For in Christ, everyone is a new creation. Congratulations, Ryan. Does anyone have a prayer for, uh, for Ryan? Oops. Come on, somebody. There's so many out here. My Lord, thank you very much for this. When you have words, my love for gratitude to you. My Lord, to die in, in this church, my Lord, that provide new members for the church, but provide a member for the heart, my Lord. It's commitment for the life. 
Thank you for this privilege to provide to us today, my Lord. Bless my brother, Glenn, and wherever they be. Today, we miss him today. But I appointed you, leaders, my Lord, to con um, contact this uh, holy, 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 my Lord, time in this church. My Lord, thank you for Brian and for Rajna, my Lord. It's a privilege for us, my Lord, to be a witness today to this beautiful, beautiful memory, memories in, uh, in our heart, in our mind. The old brother, the sister Ra Rajna and, and brother Brian, my Lord, and my commitment with you through this act of obedience to you, my Lord, the continues in this life to serve you in humble way. Thank you, my Lord, for this privilege to die. Bless Brian again, my Lord, with double uh, portion with the Holy Spirit to, to him and the Rajna too, to uh, be a privilege to be a part of the church until you come back. We know, my Lord, you come back soon. So my brother, thank you, because they prepare themselves in commitment and obedience to continue in the journey. Join with the church, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Amen. All right. I think we can be okay to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus once again. Where's Rachana? She's changing, is it? All right. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I'll follow him. I'll follow him. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you, church, for being a part of this big day for Ryan and Rachna. There's refreshments in the multipurpose hall.